My name is Evan Crane. We are going to be examining the physics from a clip of the Bourne Ultimatum. Assume as you watch this clip that there is some kind of bad physics occurring. Think about everything possible. At the end of the clip, I'll ask for volunteers to guess what the incorrect occurrence is. Block all the exits. Give the asset a green light. Take them both out. Stay there. I'm gonna get us out of here. You gotta do exactly what I say. Listen to me. This isn't some story in a newspaper. This is real. You understand me? Okay. Hello, all the agents back. Give Bourne's location at the back of the store to the asset. Yes, sir. Kill the cameras. Both. Wait, something's not right. I can see the entrance from here. If I go now, I can make it. Born? Just stay where you are. I don't think we should wait. I think someone's coming. I'm going for it. No, 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 no. So, which part had the bad physics? Let's watch that part again. Watch how Paz, the assassin, sets up this pretty gnarly gun, then attaches a tiny silencer to the tip. When the journalist is finally sighted, just a pop sounds from the gun, and the journalist's head immediately explodes with blood. The range of the shot was probably 50 to 100 meters, so the gun had to be a fairly powerful gun, particularly to be pinpoint accurate. We can assume the noise created by the silencer is an example of bad physics. Let's take a look at the physics of sound with gunfire. Muzzle blast noise can exceed 150 decibels measured at the shooter's location and is one of the loudest sounds humans are likely to hear. Silencers and suppressors have to be precision made using very exacting technology to have any hope of quieting such a loud noise. Considering that the threshold of pain is only 130 decibels, it is probably a good thing that Hollywood soundtracks don't accurately reproduce the sound of muzzle blasts. Notice how everyone in these clips are wearing ear protection of some kind. To relate this to the real world, we can look at groups that actually use silencers. SWAT teams sometimes use silencers, but not for stealth. Silencers help ensure that they will be able to hear if one of the other SWAT team members fires a shot inside the confined space of a room. Discharging an unsilenced firearm in a room can cause temporary deafness. Silencers are often used in raids on clandestine methamphetamine labs. Discharging a normal firearm produces a muzzle flash which can set off volatile fumes. So, silencers can also act as flash suppressors. Sound is a form of energy transfer, and we could define loudness in terms of the energy per unit of time, or power output, but it wouldn't give the complete picture. Watch this animation. Sound waves travel outward like the balloons expanding around their source. What the animation doesn't show is that some amount of a sound's energy is distributed on the surface of each wave. Since a wave's sound energy is fixed, and its area increases with the square of the distance from its source, the amount of energy per unit area and the wave declines rapidly as the wave moves away from the source. About the same wave area contacts a person's ear regardless of how far he or she is away from the source. The area, however, contains significantly less energy when the source is far away rather than up close. This explains why sounds occurring from a distant location are not as loud. This next part can get a little confusing. Power per unit of area, also called sound intensity, is a better measure of loudness than just power alone. Sound intensity accounts for the fact that the ear receives less power when the source is far away rather than close, which was just explained. 
Unfortunately, human perception of loudness is not linear with respect to sound intensity. In other words, doubling the sound intensity does not double the perception of loudness. What does that mean? It simply means that if you attach a silencer to the gun that decreases the sound intensity, the blast is still going to be very loud. The perception of loudness is, roughly speaking, logarithmic and is represented somewhat better by the decibel scale as follows. B equals 10 times the log of I divided by IO, where B equals relative sound intensity in decibels, IO equals sound intensity at the res threshold of hearing, and I equals sound intensity of the noise. The logarithmic nature of hearing makes muzzle blasts even harder to silence. Let's see what happens to the relative loudness level if we reduce the sound intensity of a muzzle blast by a factor of two. This means we remove half of the energy from the sound waves. Using the previously mentioned equation, we get the following. B equals 10 times log of I over 2 IO. If we follow the equations on the screen, we eventually reach 147 decibels. Cutting sound intensity in half only reduces the relative loudness by merely 3 decibels. This would be barely noticeable. A good set of earplugs typically reduces noise by about 30 decibels and so would reduce a muzzle blast from 150 to 100 decibels, which is still a very loud noise. We can estimate that the innocuous FUT sound made by a movie silencer is at roughly 50 decibels, a whopping noise reduction of 100 decibels from the decibel level of a muzzle blast. In other words, a silencer has to reduce sound intensity of a muzzle blast by a factor of 1 times 10 to the 10th power to give such a low relative loudness. This can be done with a very well-designed and precision-made silencer using subsonic ammunition. However, even commercially available silencers are more likely to give a reduction of 30 to 40 decibels similar to earplugs than the incredible 100 decibel reduction frequently portrayed in movies, especially when used on high-powered rifles. Let's recap. Sound intensity and human perception are not linear, so if you decrease sound intensity by a massive amount, such as half, the gunshot is hardly going to be any quieter. The 50 decibel sound, meaning a reduction of loudness by 100 decibels, created by the silencer in the movie is incredibly ridiculous, since even the most advanced silencers only give 30 to 40 decibel reductions. Therefore, the Bourne Ultimatum shows a case of really bad physics. Most viewers would not notice this, but now you know. To finalize my point, let's watch a video of an actual gun used by SWAT teams with and without a suppressor. That's still pretty loud.